uh, there were a lot of people that did not think that Michigan deserved to get into the NCAA tournament this year. Then, before the start of the first game, they lose their point guard to a concussion and get down by 12 points to Nico Medved and Colorado State. They come back and win that game. Uh, Devontae Jones shows up for the second game, but he injures his wrist, gets hit in the head again, and he lasts about five minutes of, uh, of, of time played uh, in the second round game of the NCAA tournament. And Michigan still finds a way to come from behind and beat Tennessee, who was, Jeff, as hot as anybody in the country it coming was. into this tournament. So what is your... Uh, how how good has this job been by by Jawan Howard? How impressive has it been to see Hunter Dickinson find a way to get this done? What's your what's your overall takeaway right now on on Michigan basketball? Yeah, I think sometimes, and Steve can weigh in on this, but I think sometimes when you come into uh, a tournament like this with not a lot of pressure, it's a lot different, right? Like like in Zaga, we saw them tonight. They have all the pressure on the world on their shoulders. Michigan has no pressure. There's nothing on them. They weren't supposed to even really be here three weeks ago. So they're playing with house money. They're playing loose. Hunter's been awesome. Now you've got the other veterans stepping up a little bit. Uh, Eli Brooks had a really good game today. And, and, and again, I mean, I, I think this is something that Juwan Howard, even staying away from his team, maybe it kind of gave him a little bit of a different perspective coming back. Yeah, I, I think the one thing I go back to with this is Michigan was really struggling earlier in the year. And obviously they came in a season with great expectations, top five, top ten rankings. And those preseason, preseason polls are so hard to do. Yeah. But there was – Jawan was, was interviewed, and I don't have the exact quote, but he said, hey, these are my guys. I'm going to hang in there here. I'm going to hang in this thing with my guys, and we're going to try to figure this thing out where you see so many times coaches may just put it on this person, put it on this person, put it on this person. He owned it. He accepted it. He said, man, this is my group. I love these kids. We're going to coach them hard. And they figured out a way, man, to get better. And um, I was really impressed. Obviously, Hunter was great today. Eli Brooks has been great. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was awesome. I mean, I mean. Tennessee shot 11% from the three-point line. I hate it for Rick Barnes in Tennessee because, man, they had a hell of a year, and Rick Barnes is a hell of a guy and a hell of a coach. But, man, I, I think the, this Michigan win, there's so many great moments again. Like, And I hate to get like on a storytelling, but, like, I mean, the, the, the embrace with Jawan and Kennedy Chandler. Yep, I was going to hit on that. Yeah. God, man, that yeah. was powerful, man. Sure was. Because – and I'm watching it with my son, and he's asking me, and he's seven, he loves basketball, but he's asking me why he's doing, like, why is he doing that to the other team? And I'm trying to explain to him, man, Jawan's been through it. Like, he's been an elite player. He's been an elite coach. He's lost tough moment games. And who better to be there for Kennedy right there in that moment? And then after five minutes later, your college boys are there, Chris and Ray. <laughs> like, I mean, we still got a group text of my Bama guys, like managers and players, and, and we live and live and die with the games and, and 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 what each other are doing, man. That was the coolest two moments I've seen in a long time. I thought that was just big time and kudos to Juwan and the way he's got these guys going. Yeah, and and it's it's nice to see him celebrating too, because I do think that after what happened with Greg Guard, it, it did feel like he would kind of uh, punish himself a little bit for that. Watching the press conference and reading the statement that he put out and seeing the the answers that he gave before the Big Ten tournament. So um, good for him. I'm glad he's enjoying that moment. Uh, Michigan is going to advance to play the winner of Villanova and Ohio State. I think that Villanova is going to end up coming out of that region. But uh, how how much fun would that be if we ended up getting Michigan and Ohio State in the Sweet 16 in San Antonio? That'd be pretty yeah. wild. It would be. I don't think. Although, I mean, again, Ohio State—they got two pros. I mean, they got Malachi two pros. Brandon, and when, and when, when Kyle Young is playing defense, and with Zay Keys yeah. out there, yeah, you know, they're a different team with a healthy Kyle Young. I talked to him yesterday about it. And, you know, he said he feels pretty good, as good as he has in a while. So, yeah, I mean, they—they they got a chance. They certainly have a chance. If Villanova misses threes, I, I'm still not going against Nova uh, this early in the tournament. I'm not stupid. All right, so Tennessee lost in the second round. Kentucky lost in the first round. LSU lost in the first round. 
Uh, there was another SEC team that I'm blanking on that lost in the first round. Alabama. And we have Alabama yeah. lost in the first round. That yeah, one's, how that can one's, you forget? How can you forget kind of, about Steve's was, Alabama team? <laughs> I blank because I was I was going to ask you if the SEC has been a disappointment, but it's hard to call Alabama a disappointment when their starting point guard tears his ACL three minutes into the game. Well, I, actually, I don't want to say tears it. Blew, yeah, injured okay. his knee. Injured his right. knee. I should know what it is. Right. Yeah, I should I should not say that. Um, it is, I mean, listen, it's been a disappointment because we all pumped it up. Right. And, and I think we knew LSU wasn't great. Right. We, they were playing kind of over their head earlier in the season, yeah, like six seed. You're right. Like, oh. right. Yeah. They, they probably were probably more of a, of a nine, 10 seed from what we looked at, but you know, nobody saw Kentucky losing this early, you know, Alabama <laughs> and Tennessee. I, I Kentucky went to the national title guys. That, I had them going to the title game. I mean, think most people did. I mean, again, they fit like this was a it, it, it's crazy to me. Somebody sent me a graphic today. I'm going to try to find this right now. While I'm on with you. This is an unbelievable graphic of the last seven years of Calipari compared to Tubby Smith. Ready for this? Tubby had more wins his last seven years compared to Calipari's last seven years. Now, Tubby had a better winning percentage overall. He had 13 tournament wins. Cal had nine. They both hit two elite eights and uh, Cal missed one tournament. Tubby missed none. And Tubby was run out of town. Now, these idiot Kentucky fans out there, some of them are ready to run Calipari out of town. They were kind of ready to do it last year. And I remember I had to write a column on it. Like, like how dumb are you? Be careful what you <laughs> wish for because you could have bully Clyde Gillespie. You know, you could have bully Clyde, um, you know, but, but again, I get it. I get it. Like this year was probably harder in a way because again, it built up their expectations last year. It was like, all right, let's just end the season. It's a COVID season. No no one expected anything out of this group. This was the, the kind of the, the free shot, right? Where everyone was like, Oh wow. You know what? We're actually good. I thought we were going to suck. We lost to Notre Dame. I thought we were going to suck and they ended up being good. So I understand that it hurts.